Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. My name is Dale and today's video I'm going to talk about a product that if you're looking for something kind of slimline, inobtrusive, that can make you aware of speed cameras and accident hazards, then this Uno CoDriver 2 might be the item for you. So thanks very much for tuning into this video. So disclaimer up front, Uno did send me the CoDriver 2 for free to review but it's not a paid or sponsored video. Again, they did send it for free, but it's completely uh, unbiased review. They don't get to see the content uh, before it goes out, so hopefully you can trust my reviews as always. They were kind enough to send me two of these, so I will be giving away one of these to one of you viewers at some point in this video as well. So with that out of the way, um, there will be a link down in the description if you decide to pick one of these up. Here in the UK, retails at 69 pounds and 99 pence. And the whole idea of the Ono CoDriver 2 is to have something that you can have on your dashboard in your vehicle and basically it's going to alert you both visually and audibly to a variety of speed cameras but also uh, hazards as well so any accidents or anything that might be happening uh, on the way forward so some people obviously may have this kind of functionality already with a dedicated speed camera detector or their sat nav may also already have it, or perhaps you're happy just to have your phone um, on the dash using Waze or something similar. So it's offering some of those availabilities that you have already, but with this, obviously there's no distractions from a screen. It's just uh, an auditory alert, with obviously a little bit of light indication, which you'll see at the moment, um, but you're not gonna be distracted by looking at a, a device. And obviously if you have an older car, or perhaps a car that doesn't have Kind of carplay or android auto then this might be a more discreet option uh, as well so in my polestar 2 that I've, you're going to see in, in this video shortly i already have information on speed cameras but other cars that we have in the family even like my wife's nissan leaf she doesn't like to use um the carplay in there so something like this is actually perfect for her to give um some alerts on speed cameras etc so i'm going to talk to you through about the obviously the item itself how it works we will then pop out in the car, just give a little demonstration of how it works when going near a speed camera, and then we'll finish up the video with my final thoughts on whether I think you should get one of these. Okay, so in terms of unboxing, it comes in actually quite a nice, um, simple pla packaging, but of a good quality. It slides open here, and then inside we can see the Ono CoDriver 2 in there. So it comes with the device itself, which I'll pop out in a moment, a USB-A to USB-C cable, and then inside at the back is a little bit of quick start uh, information guide. So if you pop the puck out itself, you can see, just look how um, discreet that is. So it's five centimeters in diameter, 1.5 centimeters thick, and only weighs 140 grams. On the back here, you can see there are a couple of 3M sticky pads, and these are actually magnets that you can stick uh, somewhere in your car and then enable this to be affixed to it. And obviously then with the magnets, I'll just show you here, just pop off the back like that. So obviously if you, then you leave your car or you wanna swap it between different vehicles, you can just pop those out and you can buy um, additional ones of those in about four pounds uh, here in the UK from the Ono co-driver um, shop. Has a built-in um, rechargeable lithium ion battery. You can see at the bottom there is the USB-C charging point. Uh, in terms of how long it lasts, the battery life is around one month. So again, obviously it depends on um, usage, but in optimal conditions, about a month. And it only takes three hours to fully charge this back up again to get things going. So, you know, I think it's not a lot of hassle. Uh, in terms of kind of compatibility so obviously you will need uh an either an apple and android phone so android version 10 and above or ios 16 or later it works in over 80 different countries so lots of compatibility and at the time of doing this review they have over a hundred thousand uh, speed cameras in their database obviously the advantage of this product is it really is also community based so the more people that have it the more people that use it 
the more awareness we're going to get of additional speed cameras and obviously the hazards as well. Setup is super simple. So basically once you turn on the device, just by push and holding this top button, you'll see it burst into life. Okay, and it basically gets set up and installed uh, and kind of paired with on the app. You have to put in a little bit of personal information to get yourself an account created. Uh, one thing that I did notice that I'm not a massive fan of with the product is once you've added it to your co-driver kind of app, you can't then remove it. It always wants to have at least one of a co-driver one or two um, in the app. So that's a little bit annoying. I'd like to be able to just remove it all if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, apart from that, works really well. As you first set it up, it does take you through a little bit of a guide in terms of how to make you aware of when it's telling you there's a speed camera, whether it's telling you if there's a hazard, how obviously you can alert someone as to whether there's a speed camera or as a hazard, which is as simple as a tap or a double tap. And if you then are driving past somewhere that gives you an alert and actually the hazard is gone or perhaps it was a mobile speed camera that's not no longer there, you can tap the top button just to dismiss it. Obviously then it can get removed from the code driver database. Obviously, as I mentioned, it does need a phone with it to work, but that can stay in your pocket all the time. When you leave your vehicle, this basically goes into a sleep or standby mode. And then when you come back, you hear that delilling noise that we heard a moment ago, which basically reconnects to your phone and then starts working straight away. So in terms of some of the indications uh, on the device itself, uh, obviously when it's turned off, there's no light indication whatsoever. Um, when there is a white light uh, on the ring, that, that basically means there is a speed limit warning. Personally, I haven't seen that in my testing, but again, I haven't been actually trying to break the speed limit in, in any of those areas. The blue flashing light means that there is a speed camera of some sort in the vicinity. And again, we'll look at that in a moment in the app. You can configure basically um, different distances in terms of time or miles or meters in terms of alerting for the alerts. If it has an amber or kind of reddish look on it, that is a road hazard. Um, if it has just the lower part of it flashing in red, that means that the battery is running low. And you obviously want to take it out of your vehicle and charge it. If it flashes red three times, that basically means for some reason that the Bluetooth connectivity to your mobile device has become disconnected. And as I mentioned, when you first connect it up, you get the kind of triple three green flashing lights, which means that the device has been connected. So let's have a quick look at the app before we pop into the car and I'll show you some of the configuration options that you have. Okay, so once you've got things open, you can see obviously your location on the map. In this example here, we can see that there is a camera not too far from this position. Um, as I mentioned, I think at the beginning of the video, um, you can use this with um, basically the maps function, whether that be in uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. That is included for a year for free as part of the purchasing of the item itself. But then moving forward, you have to pay one euro every month if you want to be able to have the map functionality with the cameras and everything on, on the screen. So again, depending um, you know, how you're going to use it. I think this is probably best for people that actually don't need to use the map function and just kind of have this as a standalone thing on their dash, alerting them to minimize distractions, etc. So obviously once you're in there, we can go to my devices. We can see there that obviously the device is connected. We have a 100% battery. If we touch the little burger thing at the top. This is the bit I mentioned to you before. You can rename it if you want to, but it's not possible to remove. It wants to always have at least one device in there at all times. If we go to the more option here, we can see obviously the settings, also options to go to the shop, refer a friend, or obviously we want to contact Ono as well. So we go to settings, there's a few options here. So we've got our speed warning uh, alerts. Obviously we can turn that on and off with a toggle. Road hazards, toggle that on and off as well. And then obviously we've got the option in terms of the warning distance. So it actually is in miles, not meters like I thought it was. So 0 0.2 miles to one mile. Me personally, I think you want to leave it at 0.2. You don't want to get kind of too much alerting uh, of how far away the cameras are for a couple of reasons. One, um, you might get a little bit uh, apprehensive of there's something around and you don't quite know where it was. But also if you increase the, the distance too much, 
it might pick up things in the same direction but on a different road. I did have that once where I was going on an A road parallel to the motorway and it did warn me about a camera on the motorway even though obviously it wasn't on the road I was traveling on. Or you can change it to seconds as well, so 20 seconds or 90, up to 90 seconds, but me personally, I just left it at 0.2 miles. That seemed to work quite well. Um, the co-driver settings, so again, we can change the volume of the Ono co-driver 2 device itself. And we also then have some options to do basically a sound test and say we're happy with the volume. So we can see here, if we do the test for the speed cameras, we will hear uh, it make its little chime and do the blue um, uh, flashing or if we want to test with the red um, we can obviously test that as well and we will see that with the red also we can turn off the green kind of blinking status of the device itself to let us know it's operational I personally like to leave it on so at a glance I can see that it is still working obviously that may impact battery life just slightly and then finally we also have the map settings where again we can show um, these cameras and the hazards on the map it's, itself. Also, if we're doing any routing with it, we can, you know, standard routing options with any map software, avoid highways, avoid toll roads, etc. And then finally, down the bottom, we have the phone settings. So again, I haven't been using this because again, I've either had my phone in the pocket or in the bag in the boot or something, but you can have the alerts sound on the phone as well. But you'll see in the videos we go out in the car, it will pop up on your phone as well, even if it's in your pocket, and you can then refer back to that later if you're interested. Okay, so that's kind of how the device functions. Let's pop out into the car. Let's go past a couple of speed cameras so I can show you what it likes, or how it likes to work in practice. So quickly before we jump into the video, if you would like to win one of these Ono co-driver twos, all I want you to do is like the video and subscribe and make a comment down in the comment section and use hashtag codriver2. I will then randomly select one of you guys or gals and send this out to you in the post um, with the restriction, I think, of being in the UK. So if you're in the UK, please like, subscribe, add a comment, hashtag codriver2, and I might be sending one of these to you in the next coming weeks. Okay, so in this first demonstration, we're going to show you what it looks like if you're using CarPlay. Again, this isn't a requirement, and as mentioned previously, if you want to have the camera information in CarPlay or Android Auto, you do get a year subscription to that for free, um, but moving forward, it's one euro a month. Obviously, the beauty of the Ono is you don't need to have a modern car with navigation or have your phone or anything on the dash. It's just something discreet that's going to give you the alerts. So we're going to go into a 30 zone where there is a, a mobile or actually a fixed camera and we'll see that it should alert us relatively soon, also flash up on the screen as well as the audio and light alerts as well. Okay, so pretty good advanced warning. Again, we can configure it based on time and distance in the settings. As we can see here, we come up to the, the Gatso and we know that we've got to worry about our speed. Obviously, we don't know what the speed limit was in this area. That's something we've got to be taking care of ourselves as drivers. So we're gonna close down the app and go past another speed camera uh, with just the Ono working, nothing here happening on the screen, but I will have a little overlay to show you that you do get information on your phone still if you wanted to look at that um, you know, later on to see what the reason for the alert was. Only thing I will mention, in a few weeks that I've been testing the Ono, haven't had a situation where I've run into a hazardous situation, so not really seen that feature, but I've got no reason to doubt why that would happen. And obviously, one of the advantages of the Ono is the more the community have access to it, the more people are using it, um, the smarter it's gonna get. Okay, so we can see that little notification has popped up on the phone so again when we get home and we're safe to stop we could have seen where the alert was and everything but we can clearly see another fixed gap so just there so that's how the Ono works when you're driving let's uh, cut back to in the study 
and uh, finish up my thoughts on this little smart camera hazard detector. Okay, so what's my final thoughts on the Ono CoDriver 2? So I actually really like it. Um, I think it's great actually that you can have something that's so kind of discreet, uses not a lot of battery and you can have it in the different vehicles. Like I said, I probably won't use it in my Polestar 2 because of having the Android map systems on there already that has the maps. Um, but definitely think I'm gonna get one for my wife in her car. And actually my other cars have got older sat navs that don't have any camera information. And it's not really easy for me to mount anything without a lot of fuss. This is gonna be absolutely perfect. But even if you have a modern car, I think it you know, does potentially have a part to play. A couple of things that I'm not a massive fan of that I think could potentially be improved. Again, just that niggly one like I mentioned earlier, be good if you could completely remove all of the devices from the app. I don't know why you have to have um, one device as opposed to no devices. And if you wanna get rid of them all, you should be able to do that. The other thing is, it is great that it has those alerts, um, but for me, I'd like to have the option to be able to turn off or turn on um, additional alerts as you get closer to the camera or the hazard as well just to make sure that you know you haven't missed that notification perhaps it might blink or make a slightly different noise at different parameters that might be an option that could be configured in software in the future um and yeah i think apart from that i think it's really good again the only thing i haven't um, been able to really test uh, as i mentioned in the kind of ride along is Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, there hasn't been any hazards for either me to report and to see how that works, or obviously to drive past any hazards that have already been um, identified by the Ono co-driver too. And obviously, even though they obviously have that database of over 100,000 cameras on their system already, this product is only gonna get better and more useful the more people um, that use it. So it's like a, you know, a crowd Kind of utilized thing isn't it so time will tell how it goes goes on but i think this is definitely a, a, a good alternative option for like i mentioned if you haven't got sat nav in your vehicle that has this or you haven't got something like a road angel or a snoop or something already that's alerting you to kind of speed cameras and obviously as part from you know again good nav software nothing else tells you about hazards so i think again that's another option um that might you know, make you get slow down a little bit if you're in traffic, you know there's been an accident ahead of it or something. But again, couldn't test that bit out um, firsthand myself. So hope this video was helpful and interesting. Let me know down in the comments, again, if you decide to grab one of these and what your experiences with it is. There was a Ono oh co-driver one, basically had a replaceable battery and everything, but they've listened to people and I think made something that looks a little bit smart, actually more professional. Obviously with the rechargeable battery it makes things a lot easier and having to faff around changing those little watch batteries, it's right pain in the butt. Uh, but yeah, let me know any thoughts, feedback, if you got one. Again, if you want to enter to win one of these, you'll have seen that earlier on in the video as well. So I look forward to hearing from you and sending these to someone in the UK in the not too distant future. As always, thanks for watching. Take care of yourself until the next video. Goodbye for now.